Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about longitudinal research design and the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so longitudinal research allows researchers to follow a group of the same participants over time. Uh, so it allows researchers to see how that group changes um, as they go through their lives. Uh, so longitudinal research can last weeks, months, years, sometimes even decades. Like there are studies uh, where researchers follow students from kindergarten to adulthood, um, or studies where they're looking at different nutritional interventions and how they affect a group over decades. Um, so there are all sorts of longitudinal research designs that require many years or even decades to complete. Um, and so it allows researchers to see how that specific group of participants, the same individuals, are changing over time in response to whatever variables it is that those researchers are studying. Uh, longitudinal research can be qualitative, quantitative, or mixed methods. All right, so some advantages and disadvantages. Um, so the advantages, the advantages <laughs> are that researchers can see how that group changes over time. So we could see like um, in kindergarten, what sort of personality traits that the students in kindergarten exhibit and how do those relate to their profession in adulthood or to their success in higher education or whatever it is that the researchers are looking for. Um, so you can see relationships between variables at different time points. Uh, so like my kindergarten example, or like if we wanted to study uh, attitudes of college students, maybe we could look at uh, surveys early in their college experience and compare them to studies later in their college experience. We might find that, um, that students who exhibit perfectionism or traits related to perfectionism early on might also experience more stress, anxiety, depression, and so on. So we can look over time at the same group of people and see how their responses or the data that we've collected earlier in the study can be related to um, the variables that we're also observing later in the study. The evidence in this type of design is usually stronger uh, than in cross cross-sectional research, because in cross-sectional research, you're just getting a snapshot of what is happening at this one moment in time, which is not as reliable as if we're collecting data uh, in multiple data collection sessions over time with the same group of participants. Um, another advantage is that in longitudinal research, you can also capture major life events that otherwise you might not be able to really see the result of. Uh, so for example, let's say in the study I described of perfectionism and stress, and we're looking at college students, um, participants that are already part of the study, let's say somebody has a baby or loses a job or a loved one or other major life events, uh, the effects of those events can be captured through the study, whereas if they weren't already participating in the study, then we wouldn't have any way of really knowing how pregnancy during college affected that student, for example. Now, some disadvantages. A big one is that the multiple data collection sessions over time with the same group of participants can actually cause changes in the participants outside of the, the changes that we're trying to detect in the variables. Um, so what I mean is like, let's say in the first data collection session with a group, um, they're asking questions about, um, you know, maybe it's interviews or surveys and we're asking questions about um, what they think, what they believe, how they feel about something. Well, just asking those questions could cause those participants to think more deeply about those questions as we go forward. It ca could cause personal growth. It could cause them to make changes or make different sorts of choices as a result of the study itself, not of the variables that you are trying to measure. Um, then another thing that can sometimes happen is that if you are using the same assessments over and over, so that if you're asking the same sorts of questions like in a survey or an interview, um, or maybe it's a motor skills test and they're, they're practicing the same test again and again, um, things like that, uh, participants, when they're doing the same thing again and again, 
Um, two things happen. One is that they learn from it and get more skilled. And the other is that they might sort of go on autopilot and just respond the same way they always have, because they've answered this question several times already, and they might just sort of answer it automatically the way they've answered it before, even if maybe their response might be different if they reflected more. Um, so those that's a disadvantage that needs to be addressed in the limitations of the study and also in the research design before you even start the study, you can try to address that by varying the data collection methods as you go along. Another disadvantage is that it is high cost for a long lasting study, both in time and money. Um, so of course, the length of time that the study lasts is gonna be much longer than in a cross-sectional study uh, where cross-sectional study, it's just one data collection session and you're done. Um, but with longitudinal, it's however long you design your study to last, weeks, months, years, uh, however long that might be. Uh, not only the time, like the time is also longer because the data collection lasts longer, but also your actual time and the amount of work it takes will be greater also because uh, it takes more time to actually collect more data and to analyze all that data and report on it and all of that. Um, so it costs more time calendar wise, but also in the actual minutes of effort that is required. And then of course, the longer a study takes, the more money it costs because the researcher needs to be paid. Um, sometimes there's money involved in facilities or equipment or incentives for participants, whatever it might be, it all costs more the longer it takes. And then finally, it can be difficult to maintain really long studies like the one I mentioned about following students from kindergarten to adulthood. That sort of study can be really difficult to maintain both because of researcher turnover and participant attrition. So participants dropping out or losing track of those participants. So imagine a study that's gonna last 20 or even 30 years. Not all researchers are going to be able or available to participate in the same study for that long. When I say participate, I mean to run or <laughs> to uh, engage in that study for that long. So uh, sometimes a study might have to end because the researcher is no longer available. Um, or most likely, or hopefully, uh, that study will be passed on to whoever is, is working with that researcher and can continue on. Uh, participation, bleh, participant attrition <laughs> is also kind of difficult because imagining you're following a student from kindergarten to adulthood, it can be hard to keep track of that student. How do you stay in contact with someone who's too young to even have a, a cell phone or an email address? Um, and so, of course, especially with children, you would communicate through parents, but it's difficult when people move, people change phone numbers, people change email addresses, they lose interest in participating in the study. Um, and so you can lose track of participants over time, which will affect your results. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great day.